Okay, now it's bitterly cold. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and frosty greetings from Wolfsfang Runway in Antarctica. In today's video, we'll be looking at interesting facts you didn't know about the ground operations on ice runway and why a piston bully is the most important vehicle for the ground crew. What are we waiting for? And let's get started. Starting off with a safety matter. But you can see that engine one is still running and that's purely for safety reasons because the APU is running as well. But uh, as they don't have an external ground power unit nor an external air starter, it's just too risky to potentially have the APU fail on ground and then be unable to start the engines. That's why they're keeping one engine running. It's always a pilot in the cockpit, obviously, to just make sure that everything's fine. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a different type of operation, entirely different, and it is so cool. The second fact are these special vehicles used for the ground ops, which are completely different to the vehicles at a normal airport. Starting off with the infamous piston bully by Case Borer, this machine is the crown jewel of the entire operation at Wolfsang Runway, from maneuvering the stairs to the airplane to hauling big ski sleighs with passenger cargo to pulling fuel pods, they are absolutely a walk in the park for these powerful piston bullies. On That's a yeah. Knight Rider look-alike steering wheel there. That's... Yeah, it is a bit. <laughs> cool. One of them also comes with a crane that helps during on and offloading of the aircraft. Now during the grueling Antarctic winters where there's temperatures of minus 50 and lower, the bullies and all other vehicles remain at the runway. It is an absolute miracle to me how the crew starts them back up again after such a winter. The third fact is the high loader built out of scaffolding. It's impossible to bring a regular high loader to Antarctica, first of all because of its size and airport high loaders don't come with tracks. Therefore, the team of White Desert built their own on and offloading ramp and conveyor belt on skis to aid the process. And with the help of the piston bully crane, all the cargo can safely be taken out of the cargo hold. So I've seen a lot of cargo in my life that we transport with a 747, but I have to admit, these electric bikes that have been flown to Antarctica are next level. That's, that's a new kind of game. But look at those spikes, they're spicy. Like it. Next up, we have the ski -doos. These snowmobiles on ice replace the trolley trucks you know at tarmac airports. Now, these nimble machines are used to pull the cargo sleighs and to get from A to B on ice in a quicker manner. But what they also do is pull the passenger sleighs. I mean, how cool is that? When do you ever get driven to your aircraft on a sleigh <laughs> pulled by a ski -doo? I absolutely love this feature. Therefore, also a big thank you to the ground crew who took me to the shooting locations with one of these motorbikes on ice. Okay, here's a really cool, fun fact. I'm at the nose gear of the plane right now. And you see that the chop is not fully pushed against the tire. Also at the back. See there? The reason they're doing that is in case there's sort of slight movement and the chop actually freezes <laughs> to the ice, it'll be really difficult to get rid of it. So that's why they're just placing them a little apart. Also at the, at the main landing gear, just to ensure that they can actually release them again. All right, I'm here with Knight. Drive of the piston bully. <laughs> we just coupled on the uh, fueling tank, so we're going to be defueling the Airbus A340 now. Obviously, not entirely, just a little bit. And we are now going to pull it under the uh, right hand wing of the uh, Airbus A340. And this fuel, which is jet fuel, is then used for the Baslers, which are the turboprop DC3s, the twin otters, the piston bully even runs on it, generators, everything runs on jet fuel down here. Now, how do you extinguish a fire in Antarctica? Well, you can't really with water because the water would freeze up in the tanks of the fire engine. So this is a pressurized retardant they then use to spray onto the fire. It's like a dry 
chemical powder uh, they then to apply onto the fire. Obviously if you had an APU fire you could use the fire extinguisher that is on board. It's basically just a gigantic fire extinguisher because again the temperatures are just too cold to keep water in a tank for the fire brigade to then extinguish with. You have to think about everything here. It's just too cold. <laughs> so we are now in the car with Agnieszka and uh, Emmanuel and we're going to be performing a runway inspection that Emmanuel can ensure that the runway is safe enough to take off again. So here we go. I felt very honored to join Emmanuel and Agnieszka for the runway inspection. This allows the pilots to thoroughly inspect the runway condition for the next takeoff roll. And at the same time, a friction test is performed that the pilots have the most recent friction coefficient reading, which they need for their takeoff calculations. Now, I also want to show you the runway markings. You'll see that they're actually really not that big. I mean, I'm 185, this is maybe, I don't know, a meter 60, that they're high and they're really big as well. And uh, this is all they use for the entire runway. There's probably like maybe 50 on each side for the pilots sort of to mark out the width of the runway. There are no centerline markings. The only thing that they have, there's a bit of a centerline leading in light before the runway or before the touchdown zone. But that's it for the pilot to align. It's really not much. Another vital point for the pilot is you kind of have to have a touchdown zone. So you need to distinguish that. Uh, on normal runways, you have big white stripe on both sides that sort of determines the, the touchdown zone. Here you don't have that. You can't mark out or paint big stripes onto the runway. So that's why they have these black little labels right there that sort of showcases the pilot. This is where the touchdown zone is or the aiming point to where you should be aiming your plane visually to maintain on that glide path coming in for landing. It's definitely not an easy undertaking, especially uh, you have to have good contrast as well. Today is actually not a great day for the landing because there was too much white sort of overcast layer to distinguish the runway from the remaining horizon. So today was a little bit difficult for the pilots to come in. Nevertheless, they did a fantastic landing. And you can also see your touchdown, which is pretty cool because it's really the only plane coming in today or on this prepared runway. So as we did the runway inspection, the pilot could actually point out that he touched the main gear right here, which was above sort of the touchdown line where he wanted it to be. And we could also see the nose wheel touchdown as well, which is really, really nice. And I also want to like to show you the, the grooves uh, on the runway. So you can actually, here you can see it really well, that you have the blue ice on the ground right here. And then they use the piston bully and drive over the ice, create material by sort of kind of crushing the ice. And then they have that compactor or whatever it is at the back of the piston bully that actually then compresses the ice back onto the runway and then leaves those grooves that you want that are sort of increasing the braking efficiency for the aircraft when it touches down. So the plane can now take off from this runway without any further preparation, but then the ground ops team has to come with the piston bullies and then they will start grooming, or let's say grooving the runway one more time, which takes something like 10 to 12 hours because it takes one piston bully to just take one lane up and down, it takes an entire hour for the three kilometers to go from the runway end all the way to the other side. So it takes a very long time to get the runway ready. Okay, if anybody cares to get me a Christmas present, this is what I want. <laughs> Look at this, a Polar truck, cool. As you see, everything is entirely different when operating aircraft on ice. The team here of White Desert and Arctica have nailed it down to a T, having dealt with more than 150 heavies landing and taking off from Wolfsfang Airport. I hope to be back very soon for one more expedition to the South Pole in one of their DC-3 Basils. And on that bombshell, a huge thank you for White Desert for bringing me out here and letting me experience this incredible operation on ground. And if you are up for an Arctic expedition and want to fly to Antarctica, land on ice, jump in a DC-3 Basler or a twin otter on skis to get flown to your camp or even the South Pole, check out their website and book your trip today. As I am standing right here, I can guarantee you, 
it will be the trip of your lifetime. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go on my website, check, and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, even in freezing Antarctica. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.